Well, here we are. I, uh, I do apologize for these videos being late. And I do want to say that uh, the AFCON kicks out off in just several hours from now. But I still have to finish my Group E and F previews, go through the teams, as well as give final predictions for the tournament. So let's jump right in. I encourage you to check out part one if you have not done so. Let's jump right into Group E. We have defending champions Algeria, Ivory Coast, Sierra Leone, and Equatorial Guinea. So Algeria enter this tourney as the favorite. And in my opinion, they have the best chance of any defending champion to repeat their title really since the Egyptian generation from 06 to 2010. They're still under their coach, Jamel Belmadi. Algeria's overall record in the AFCON is two wins in 1990 and 2019. Two third place finishes in 1984 and 1988. Uh, runners up in 1980, fourth place in 1982. Now, Algeria are currently on a 34-game unbeaten run, and depending on if you count matches from the Arab Cup, they are even further than that. They're approaching 40. Um, so heavy favorites, still two and a half years removed from the last AFCON, very likely the best team in Africa. Still, the, the squad speaks for itself. You look at the names that have been called up, familiar faces, uh, Islam Slimani, Adam Unas, uh, Yassim Brahimi, Sofian Feguli, Riyad Mahrez, the captain from Manchester City. Algeria is a <laughs> is OP levels of strong. Um, I think in this group, they should top it. Uh, although if they do, they will have a tough round of 16 clash likely against either Egypt or Nigeria on paper. But even if they finish second, they look primed for a somewhat difficult round of 16 game, possibly against Mali or their neighbors and another rival of theirs, Tunisia. So I think Algeria, you look at the way the bracket is set up, it's it's not the easiest path to repeating as champions. Although I do got to say, if they go on to do it, it will be well and richly deserved. Uh, and they have the squad and the means to do it because this team, in my opinion, has only gotten better and better. It's an improved team from the 2019 side that won the AFCON. And, you know, I think they're on course to making it back to the World Cup. Um, and they could make a big splash there uh, if they were to make it to Qatar. But let's not jump too far ahead right now. Look, the names on this squad speak for itself. Even ones I haven't mentioned yet. Ismail Benasser, who was uh, named the best player of the tournament back in 2019. He won Best Player Award. Uh, you, you have other guys on this team that I even haven't even mentioned yet. Rice Memboli, veteran goalkeeper. He's 35 years old. Goalkeeper of the tournament back in 2019. He's still with the squad. So... Rami Ben Saibani from Borussia Mönchengladbach. I mean, <laughs> Yassin Brahimi, you know, it, it just goes on, right? Yusuf Belaili, Baghdad Bunaja. I mean, they should top this group. Now, uh, one thing I will caution, though, is that I could see the Ivory Coast bringing a little bit of an upset here uh, in recent memory. Whenever they face each other in AFCON, they've had stalemates against each other. You go back to, I believe, Two years ago, they were the only team in the AFCON to actually get a result on Algeria. That ended up in ended up being a draw in the quarterfinals that resulted in a penalty shootout that Algeria squeezed through. And then you also had, I think they met each other in the group stages back in 2012. That game ended in a in a 2-2 draw. No, not 2012. It was uh I think 2015, I'm not sure. So Ivory Coast themselves, I'm going to get to them right now. They're also a very talented squad. But here's the problem with the Ivory Coast. You can't trust them because they don't really play that great as a unit. Uh, and this team is well past the golden generation of Didier Drogba and the Torre brothers back in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Uh, funny enough, they actually won the AFCON after Drogba's retirement back in 2015. Ivory Coast have two AFCON titles those coming in 1992 and in 2015, but they're still a squad that is very capable and I think they can be very dangerous on their day. I think they're quietly a contender for a very deep run uh, under their manager, Patrice Bumel. You look at the guys they have in their squad, 
Seri Dia, who is in his late 30s now, but they have really talented guys. They got Frank Kessie in midfield, plays for Milan. Uh, they still have uh, Wilfried Zaha in there for Crystal Palace. They still have they have Sebastian Haller, who has been tearing it up so far in the Champions League with Ajax. Uh, I think he's currently the top goal scorer of this current Champions League season. If Ivory Coast were to go on a deep run here, he would be a decent contender for Golden Boot winner. Highest top goal scorer of the AFCON. Um, you know, they have Nicolas Pepe. He's only 26 years old, plays for Arsenal. He's still in there. So, look, it's a it's a very talented squad. Maxwell Cornet. But it's not the one that went on that title run back in 2015 and in the, the, the previous golden generation of the Ivory Coast. I do think that a lot of people are not considering them as much as they should. I do think they're capable of finishing top of this group. I think they can spring a surprise, a little bit of a surprise, and beat Algeria. But uh, a reasonable expectation for Ivory Coast would be maybe semifinals. I think that if they were actually to go on to, the, to win this tournament and kick into a higher form, and this squad gels together, which I think is really their main problem, it's a, it's a, it's a crop of good individuals but they just don't have that team chemistry in my opinion i wouldn't be surprised if that team chemistry actually does kick in and they go on and 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 actually win the title it would not be the biggest surprise ever but i, I would i would put the likes of algeria ahead of them as far as like likelihood to go on to win the tournament reasonable expectation for algeria of course is to repeat as champions they enter this competition as the number one favorite and still in all likelihood the best team in africa Moving on to, um, we have, who else is in this group? Uh, uh, Equatorial Guinea. You know, Equatorial Guinea, they reached the semifinals on home soil back in 2012. They went out in the group stages in 2015. I believe this is their third AFCON participation, the first time they've qualified since 2015. And I think that they are a plucky team. They are... Not a, a side that I would bill as a dark horse, but a team that I think can cause some damage and maybe play spoiler in this group to uh, uh, determining who eventually finishes top. Uh, we have to remember, they put in an upset uh, victory over Tunisia in the last round of World Cup qualifiers. They finished in a very respectable second place behind the Carthage Eagles. This included a 1-0 win against Tunisia at home. And they finished ahead of the likes of Zambia and Mauritania in their group. They have capable players. Uh, some ones that stand out are Luis Enrique Nisue. He, I believe, uh, scored their goal uh, in the first round of African qualifiers that saw them get over the hump against Sudan. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That was Emilio Nisue. I, I confused them. The captain, Emilio Nisue. Uh, other players on this squad that could make a case for them if they want to finish as one of the best third-place teams. They have a lot of guys that play in the lower divisions uh, in Spain. Uh, for clubs like Murcia, Hercules, Naval, uh, Naval Camero. Uh, I never heard of Naval Camero, but on the whole, I think you would probably favor them to come ahead of Sierra Leone. But the question will be, can they do enough to survive and, and actually scrape something against Algeria and the Ivory Coast? Can they capitalize on an Ivorian team who has not really uh, played that great as a unit. They've shown flashes here and there of being a cogent team. But can, for example, Equatorial Guinea beat Sierra Leone and maybe get a point against Ivory Coast? Four points, you'd have to think, most likely would be enough to come through this group. I'm not exactly sure if they will do it. I think they could do it, and they'll be on the cusp. And I think that Equatorial Guinea might also benefit from the fact that other groups are... Well, their group is lopsided, but other groups are more well-rounded. And this could very well come down to that game against Sierra Leone. If they win there, they get three points. Three points itself might be enough. So I think a reasonable expectation for Equatorial Guinea would be something like the round of 16. Uh, because you'd have to think they come through that. And according to the bracket, they could come up against the host nation, Cameroon. I would not favor them at all whatsoever. Or they could play against... Um, Nigeria or Egypt. Again, I would not favor them. So anything past the round of 16 would be an enormous success for them, but I would not put money on it. Uh, they could finish as possibly 
the fourth best third place team and just have enough to get through, or they could just miss out as well. Or they could finish bottom of the group for all I know. They could finish bottom if Sierra Leone uh, springs in a surprise, which brings us to Sierra Leone. So let me pull this up here for Sierra Leone. One second. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Sierra Leone. Recent performances in AFCON. Let's see here. Africa Cup of Nations. The Wow. The last time they have qualified for the AFCON was 1996. They've had only two appearances in the tournament overall, 94 and 96, both of which were group stage exits. So Sierra Leone has returned to the showpiece event in Africa for the first time in 26 years. Congratulations to Sierra Leone making it back. They beat Benin in qualifiers. They were the last entrant who actually made it to this tournament. They grabbed the 24th and final spot. They're under their uh, leadership of uh, Captain Omaro Bangura. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the team here. I do know a couple players that stand out. Kai Kamara, I've heard his name, 37 years old. He plays in Finland. I think the YouTube channel, Michael Talks Fit Football, he could probably tell you more about Kai Kamara, more familiarity with the Finnish league than I have. Uh, other names in this squad include Aji Kamara. He plays, uh, he plies his trade in the Danish division. A lot of Kamaras on this squad. A lot of players here that I'm seeing that don't have club loyalties. They're currently unattached. As players, I count one, two, three, four, at least four Kamaras. Maybe that's a common surname in Sierra Leone. I don't know. Um, I think they're a side that people have to be careful for because I think that people have to consider that, much like Comoros, making it to this tournament is the achievement, and anything from here is really a bonus. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to beat a team like Benin, who were... AFCON quarterfinalists in the last edition and prevent them from qualifying, I wouldn't be surprised if they were to actually find themselves in the round of 16 if they were to get a victory over Equatorial Guinea. You'd have to think that match between Sierra Leone and Equatorial Guinea will be the decisive one for who finishes most likely third in this group and actually has a chance of coming through. But it could be a case where Algeria and Ivory Coast both run away with this group comfortably. Sierra Leone and Equatorial Guinea they face off in a stalemate, which does none of them favors whatsoever. And they both finish joint bottom on one point each. And it really just comes down to goal differential for who finishes in that third position, but both would be out. You'd have to think that that clash between both of these top, these teams is a mandatory three points for either one of them. So for Sierra Leone, look, it's a Comoros type situation, not as majestic and great of a story of Comoros because Comoros is a small African Island nation first ever time participating in an AFCON, but this is Sierra Leone's first time back in over a quarter of a century. So they, they would, they're just happy to be here, I think. They will be competitive, and here's a fun fact. Uh, I found out that they actually, they have a little bit of a, of a record here against the Ivory Coast. They've been known here and there to get results against the Ivory Coast, be a difficult team for the Ivorians to come up against. So that's why I think they're in here with a shot of possibly being the surprise of the tournament here. But I'm not going to lie to you and say I know a lot about Sierra Leone because I don't. Uh, a reasonable expectation for them would be round of 16. I, I think that's the most likely li uh, limit. Now we get to our final group. Uh, group F, which is a very similar group to what we had in 2019. Tunisia, Mali, Mauritania, and Gambia. Gambia. Yeah, Gambia with a B. Uh, Tunisia, Mali, and Mauritania, all three were in the same group back in 2019. Mali finished top, Tunisia came in second, Mauritania came in third, but Mauritania did not have enough to advance. So similar to that, let's go through here. Now, Mali, I'm going to go through, what should I talk about first? I, I should talk about Mali first. So Mali under manager Mohamed Magasuba. They enter this tournament looking to go at least one step further than they did in 2019, where they topped their group, but bat out to the Ivory Coast in the round of 16. A little bit of a disappointing finish for them. Mali uh, has never won the Africa Cup of Nations, uh, but they have finished with two third-placed uh, bronze medal finishes uh, this decade, well, last decade, rather, 
Uh, those came in 2012 and 2013. They beat Ghana on both occasions to actually finish in third place. This is a, okay, Mali is a team in West Africa that always teases the breakthrough, but they don't quite get there, both domestically and in the World Cup. For my money, along with Burkina Faso, Mali is the best West African country to have never qualified for a World Cup, something they will seek to rectify this March, being one of the 10 finalists into the playoffs uh, for this cycle. Good luck to, to them, by the way. But Mali is a team that has been on a lot of people's radar as a potential dark horse to go on a very far run in this tournament. A lot of it will depend, again, on the bracket. I'm going to use the term bracketology a lot tonight. Bracketology 2014 tournaments are very weird. But this is a team that from a country that perpetually produces a lot of talent in West Africa. But they have not been able to elevate themselves to uh, the achievements that the likes of Ivory Coast and Ghana and Nigeria and Cameroon have achieved, but it's not for lack of trying. I mean, just going through the list here, I mean, for the guys who have been called up, you have Adama Traore, place for Sheriff Tiraspol, the, the Moldovan club that famously made it to the Champions League group stage this season. Really, really talented guy. So you have uh, Alu Dieng, he plays for Al Ali to give you a for a, a sense of um, domestic talent they have playing for one of the best clubs in Africa, Al Ali being a club in Egypt. Uh, you know, they have a lot of really talented guys. Amadou Haidara, 23 years old, plays for RB Leipzig. A lot of guys coming through the French division. A couple players in the Prem as well. Yves uh, Bissouma. I'm just going to go through the list here. Mohamed Kamara for RB Salzburg. So Hamadou Traore. Khalifa Koulibaly. So it's a team that is promising. It's a team that is promising. I have to wonder, though, because as I we found out through Dominic Rich's stream uh, previously, just earlier this evening, um, it doesn't look like they have sent their a full strength squad. They're missing a couple of key defenders. I do wonder if this will cost them in that head to head against Tunisia, which on paper should be the decisive one in terms of uh, determining who will top this group because whoever tops this group is going to play the second place team from the adjacent group in group E. And that team could be Algeria. It could be Ivory coast, but funny enough, finishing second in this group, in my opinion, is actually better. And this is a, one of the weird quirks of 24 team tournaments because second in group F plays the second team from group B, which is Senegal's group, which is, is not the strongest group. After Senegal, you have Guinea, Zimbabwe, Malawi. That should be a, a, a tense battle for second, most likely. So if Mali were to come in second behind Tunisia, they would likely come up against Guinea, Zimbabwe, or Malawi, which is a much more preferable opponent than if they come up against Algeria and Ivory Coast. So this is one of those scenarios where, in the opposite of Egypt and Algeria's case, uh, excuse me, in the opposite of Egypt and Nigeria's case, where finishing first in Group D is paramount, this, in Group F, the team is better off finishing in second. Make of that what you will, the luck of the draw, the way that the format has been, uh, you know, carried out, so to speak. And I have a feeling that this time, Tunisia might actually finish top. I'll get to, to Tunisia in a moment. But I have a feeling this time Tunisia might finish top, which would come to the benefit of Mali, because I would favor them to come through against the second place team from Group B and get to the quarterfinals. I think if Mali doesn't go at least one step further this time than last time around, it's a failure. Quarters, semis would be a great finish for this team. Anything more than that would be absolutely phenomenal. I know there's a couple of YouTubers, at least one, who, who have them in the final. That would be a, a historic landmark achievement. New blood in the uh, AFCON final. But um, that brings me to Tunisia. Now, Tunisia... Tunisia is, I think, a decent candidate to pick for a flop of the tournament. If you're going to pick a team that could potentially flop one of the big dogs, it might be Tunisia. It might be Tunisia. There's a lot of di uh, uh, discontent among Tunisian fans with their manager, Mondor Kabayer. 
a lot of uh, accusations of him misusing players. Uh, they, they also have a couple of players that had to pull out of the AFCON at the last minute. For example, Yusuf Masekni and uh, Sefadan Jaziri, they tested positive for COVID, uh, but they were not allowed by the Federation to be replaced ahead of the tournament. And then you have other guys like Firas Ben Larbi, who withdrew due to injury. He had to be replaced by another guy. So, look, Tunisia is still one of the best sides in Africa. Like they produce a lot of talent. Some of the guys that participated in the FIFA Arab Cup a few weeks ago have been brought into this squad here. So, you go through the, the, the squad they have right now. They have called, they still have Wabi Khazri, the 30 year old for St. Etienne. He's still there. Naim Sliti, who plies his trade in the Saudi League. Uh, 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 Isam Jabali is in the squad. Um, I'm not actually sure who the hell is Isam Jabali. I've never heard of him. Mohamed Draguer is still there. Dylan Braun, the defender. Yep. Okay. He was in the last World Cup. So a lot of the guys here that were in that played in the last AFCON as well as in the most recent World Cup in Russia. You have them coming in here. Hannibal Mejbri. Hannibal Mejbri should be one of the players of this tournament to look out for. 18-year-old youngster, has an afro. He starred for Tunisia at the Arab Cup a few weeks ago. The youngster from Manchester United. He's going to be a young, talented prospect that a lot of Tunisian fans will be look on, looking out for to see if he can make a big impact in this tournament. Um, other than that, you have some guys from the local domestic league from Esperance to Tunis, like Mohamed Harmina. Uh, you also have uh, Jalain Chalali, Mohamed Ali Ben Romdane. So it's a mix of European and domestic-based uh, players in this squad. But to be honest with you, I could see Tunisia finishing anywhere between... Um, I don't know where they're going to finish. I could see them going out in the round of 16 or making another run, a repeat run to the semifinals. It all really depends on who they face. Um, and also to keep in mind the fact that Mali is missing a few, uh, a few key defenders in their squad... So this group could come down to goal differential if both Tunisia and Mali beat Mauritania and Gambia. You could see Tunisia pit Mali. But remember what I said. It's actually better to finish second in this group, in my opinion, because of the fact that the winner of this group is going to play Ivory Coast or Algeria. I'd rather play the second place team from Group B, if you know what I'm saying. But here's the thing about Tunisia. I don't really trust them against smaller sides. I don't really trust them. Remember I mentioned Equatorial Guinea a few minutes ago? Tunisia kind of flirted with the disaster in, in the last round of World Cup qualifying. They lost on the road to Equatorial Guinea. They needed they they actually drew on the road to Mauritania as well, who's in the same group uh, with them in this AFCON. Um, I, I don't... I think the reason I give Mali the edge in this group to come first is because... I, th I, I trust Mali to be a little bit more ruthless and clinical in getting max points, maximum points against Gambia and Mauritania than I trust Tunisia to do it. I think that if Tunisia were to even get a, uh, if they were to drop points in even just one of those matches, they would most likely have to beat Mali. That's why that first match day between Mali and Tunisia is going to go a very long way in determining, in my opinion, uh, who tops this group, unless Gambia or Mauritania has a hell of a tournament, of course. So, you know, it's tough. Um, but Tunisia has given me more reason for pause in recent history than Mali has. Mali swept through their qualifying group. All right, I'm back. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm here. Sorry about that. Connection went out temporarily. I'm here. So, um, yes, Mali did not have the most challenging World Cup qualifying group. They came through Rwanda, Uganda, and uh, who else? Kenya. But they didn't make hard work of it in the same fashion that Tunisia did. And then with Tunisia, yes, they're sort of African royalty. They are up there. They are former AFCON champions. Their highest ever finish was winning the title on home soil back in 2004. It took them 15 years to get back to the semifinals, which they did in 2019. I'm skeptical they can do the same here. 
Another reason why I'm skeptical they can do the same here is because historically speaking, and I will mention this later because this is very important. Historically speaking, North Africa doesn't tend to do very well in AFCONs hosted in West Africa. In other words, in AFCONs hosted anywhere outside of North Africa, with the exception of Egypt, who has won it twice outside of North Africa. But historically speaking, North African teams don't do very well. Um, this could be a case where Tunisia ends up topping this group but still goes out in the next round because they get a harder draw than Mali does uh, if they were to come against Algeria or Ivory Coast. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just don't I, don't I don't like the look of Tunisia. I could easily see this being a case where Tunisia flops out, Mondor Kibayer is sacked and loses his job, and they have new management going into the playoffs in March, and there's a whole question – over if the team is in disarray and, 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 and all of that. Or I could be wrong about that. Moving on, we have Gambia. Let me move on here. Give me one second. It is cold in here, I tell you that. My hands are freezing. My hands are freezing. Let me pull up Gambia here. Just give me one moment. A lot of teams are impacted by COVID, though, Sammy. A lot of, like, uh, even today the news is coming in that teams are, are being hit with COVID and, and all that. And I imagine all throughout the AFCON as well, there'll be players who have to pull out, and it'll mess up a whole a bunch of people's brackets, including my own. But it is what it is. We live in pandemic times. Um, Gambia, I believe, is this their first ever AFCON? Surely not. Is this their first ever Africa Cup of Nations? It is their first. Well, congratulations to Gambia. Congratulations for being here. Well done. You should be proud of yourselves. You know what? Just like Comoros, they've got nothing to prove. That can make them a dangerous team. They were to beat Mauritania, who's more or less the other weak link in this group. Maybe they can come through in a top three position as a third place team. So I think a reasonable ceiling for them is round of 16. Reasonable ceiling for Mali and Tunisia, I think, if everything goes their way, is to win the tournament. That's because I think up to 10 or 11 countries can actually win the AFCON. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Uh, if all the wind hits their sails and go in their favor. I think up to 10 or 11 different countries can win this tournament. That's how crazy Africa is. So a reasonable ceiling for Mali and Tunisia is to win it, but I don't I don't imagine that's going to happen. Um, but let me go here through here for Gambia. Let me go here for Gambia. A lot of players here, I don't know. I do know their manager, Tom Santfiet. Yes, I know him. He is a Belgian. He used to manage Malawi back in the day. He used to hop around uh, the African continent, be a manager for all these different national teams. He's one of those like European managers that always lands a new deal, like or like you know what I mean, like a, a different African national teams. I ha I remember seeing his name; he's very familiar. But going through the squad right now, I mean, I'm looking at guys like Asan Cisse. I'm just reading names here. I don't know who these people are. I'm sorry, I don't know who these players are. Uh, Ebrima Darboe, who plays for Roma, so I imagine he must be one of their more decent players. Mohamed uh, Baramosi. Bubakar Tralawi. Um, let me see here. Yeah, I don't know these guys. I, I really don't know these guys. Suleiman Mera, he plays in the Belgian division for Ghent. Look, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Tunisia and Mali should finish in either order in the top two in this group. Would it be surprising if one of Mauritania or Gambia pips them for a top two spot not necessarily not necessarily but um this could be a group that produces only two teams that come through the next round into the next round and two teams that are eliminated so you could see a team like gambia or, or mauritania finish in third position and then finish as one of the worst third place teams and not actually end up advancing i'm not going to expand more on gambia just because i don't know very much about them but i would say their ceiling is most likely the round of 16, but here's the thing. If they were to somehow finish top two and play another weak team from Group B, I mean, 
perhaps an underdog quarterfinalist if if things really go in their favor. But um, that's all about I can say about Gambia for the time being. Um, I don't think there's a single team in this entire tournament, not a single team, whose ceiling is a group stage exit. None. At the very least, every team in this competition can make it to the round of 16. That includes Comoros, it includes Malawi, it, can, it, it includes Sierra Leone and, and these guys in Group F. So, yeah. That brings me to Mauritania, who I'm somewhat a little bit more familiar with. Mauritania were in the last AFCON. Congratulations to them on making it back to a second successive tournament. A little bit of familiarity in a group here, same group with Mali and Tunisia like last time. Could this play in Mauritania's advantage, and could they go a step further this time and get past the group stage, or will it be a repeat of history where they finish in behind Mali and Tunisia again and not have enough to advance past the first round? They can't seem to avoid Tunisia. They played them at the last AFCON. They played them twice in the same World Cup qualifying group Late last year, they played them in the Arab Cup, and now they're playing them again in this AFCON. This will be the fifth or sixth time. The fifth or sixth time they're playing Tunisia. And here's the thing. They were lambasted. They were lambasted in the Arab Cup, but different squads. You know what I'm saying? Not full-strength squads for either team. They were. They also lost 3-0 to Tunisia in World Cup qualifying. But then they also drew Tunisia 0-0 at home. And they drew Tunisia in the last Africa Cup of Nations as well. Mm. So they haven't been able to beat them, but they've gotten some results here and there against Tunisia. So if they can beat Gambia, who might be the weakest team in this group, um, maybe four points would seal the deal if they were to get something against the Carthage Eagles here. Or th maybe three points would be enough with just a simple win over Gambia. But see, these margins are so fine. These margins are so... The gap between the lower tier sides in Africa, guys, is not that much. Uh, I would not be surprised if Gambia and Mauritania more or less are on the same level. That's why I don't understand why some people are necessarily are writing Gambia off. I think that... Uh, with a lot of uncertainty and a lot of like volatility in the African region, anything really can happen. Sierra Leone's in contention, Equatorial Guinea's in contention. Yes, there's two obvious favorites in the last two groups here in Group E and F. Algeria and Ivory Coast are considerably ahead of Equatorial Guinea and Sierra Leone. Mali and Tunisia are considerably ahead of Mauritania and Gambia, but all hand, all cards, you know, all hands are up because we don't know at the end of the day for sure what will happen. But going through the squad here from Mauritania, let me go through here. Give me one second. Okay. Wow, they have a player in India. That's interesting. Not a very star-studded squad. Uh, they're... Top goal scorer headed to this tournament is a gentleman by the name of Adama Ba, who has six goals for the first country and 40 caps. He plies his trade in the Moroccan League for RS Burkan. Uh, other goal scorers in this squad include Mohamed Deliyali, uh, Kasa Kamara, another Kamara, but this time for uh, Mauritania, Yakub Sidi Etmane, uh, some players from the Mor Mauritanian division like Hema Tanje and Mohamed Soeed. Um, some players in the lower division of France, not surprising. This seems to be a trend for a lot of West African countries. Uh, maybe there's a, is there a cultural connection between Mauritania and France? Does Mauritania speak French? I know they're, they're Arab country and they speak Arabic, but like they have ties to France. I did not know that. Um, Gosama Fofana, he plays for Cluj in the Romanian division. Um, a couple of guys in the Greek division and the Turkish division as well. Um, Omar Kamara. But it looks here like the main goal scorer is, is Adama Ba. Adama Ba seems to be their main player here. 
Whereas if I scroll through with Gambia, they seem to have more reliable goal scorers and Mauritania. So I'm starting to think that maybe Gambia would be maybe have be slightly favored here against Mauritania. I'm not quite sure, but again, it's who the hell knows, right? Who the hell knows at the end of the day. But um, yeah. So reasonable. Okay. Don't spam my thing with uh, links to shady stuff. That Russian commenter in the section. Don't don't do that. Okay. So. A reasonable ceiling for Mauritania, I think, is the round 16. And then going out to one of the group winners, it'll be an improvement from their finish in 2019 at the end of the day. Now, this brings us to the close of these previews and going through the teams and talking about their ceiling and, and everything and expectations. I do want to say a few closing thoughts before I give my predictions as well as highlight some statistics that might point to the winner before I give my own personal choices for the winner, my predictions. I think you can make a strong case for either one of Cameroon, Nigeria, Algeria, uh, Egypt, uh, who else? Senegal, even some teams that are right under them, like, like Ivory Coast, or Mali, or Tunisia. Oh, Morocco, I forgot. Morocco, one of the favorites, in my opinion. This is how hard this tournament is to predict. It's very difficult. It can come down to very fine margins, and it could be a case of matchups, who plays who, as well as a heavy dose of bracketology. Brackets, the bracket plays a heavy role uh, in determining who can go where in this tournament. You also have dark horse teams, like Burkina Faso. Maybe you can have Zimbabwe get out of the the group for the first time ever, not win it, but get out of the group for the first time ever. You know, then you also have um, other really decent uh, teams that uh, could make a, a splash like Cape Verde islands or, or I don't know. Um, maybe one of Gambia or Sierra Leone can get out of their group. So look, it's hard. I got the winner right in 2019 now, as far as what the stats show, statistically speaking, about 80 to 85 percent of the time, this is me, I have no life. I do a lot of research and I have a, some time on my hands. Um, about 80 to 85 percent of the time, the winner of the AFCON had qualifies for the previous edition. About 11 countries did not qual that part are participating this year did not qualify last edition, which suggests they're not very good. They're not good enough to win it. So you have like Malawi, Gambia, Sierra Leone, um, Ethiopia. Also, North Africa does not do well in. Afcon's held outside of North Africa, with the exception of Egypt. So, teams like Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, they have never won outside of North Africa. That that, that does not mean they they cannot make deep runs into the semis or even the final, but it, it usually means they're not going to win. So, it would suggest a West African team would would win this tournament. Another fact that that's two stats right there. Number three, another stat is. Um, the best team in Africa usually does not win this tournament. Uh, there are exceptions like the Egyptian golden generation of 2006 to 2010. But a lot of the time you get like Zambia 2012 results or you even get Nigeria 2013. Nigeria, in my opinion, we're not the best team in Africa in 2013. Remember, they got off to a very slow start in the group stages. They kind of found their way through the tournament after coming through, eking their way through the group stages before they met Burkina Faso again in the final and, and beat them. Um, Ivory Coast was the best team in 2015. Uh, 
and Cameroon was not the best team in 2017. People forget this Cameroon squad right now. I think a lot would a lot of analysts would agree with me. This Cameroon squad is better than the one in 2017 that flew under the radar and won that AFCON because in 2017 they were missing quite a few number of players heading into that tournament under their manager Hugo Bruce. We're not among the favorites. They also had a very slow start to the competition. They grew into the into the, the tournament and they went on to win the whole thing despite not being among the favorites in 2017. This was just five years ago. And in 2019, Algeria was not among the favorites. Algeria didn't really become the best team in Africa until that team that had won the AFCON in, in 2019. You might you may remember this going into that tournament three years ago, they were not billed as among the favorites to do it. In fact, the current unbeaten streak that they've been on since 2018, this is a, a buildup of their success from the 2019 tournament. So they didn't become the best team in Africa. They weren't the best team in Africa before winning that tournament. They cultivated that image from winning it and based on what they've done after it. Because I remember all the anal all the analysis, all the um, the previews, and, and all the build-up to that last AFCON, hardly anybody had Algeria winning it. They were barely even mentioned. But they were always considered as a dangerous team because of the talent they have. Guys that are playing in these top clubs in Europe that could go on and win the whole thing. But there were, there were names being tossed around like Egypt because we were hosting. There were names being tossed around like Senegal who made it to the final. There were names being tossed around like Morocco and, and uh, I think even Congo DR people were right. were raving about them. Ivory coast, but Algeria, they won that tournament. It's easy to look back on it in hindsight based on what they're doing now. But back then, they weren't among the favorites. So, taking all that into consideration, what are my predictions for this tournament? Now, I want to say one, la one last thing before I tell you my predictions. So, because of very fine margins, it only takes this little bit of error for my entire bracket to explode and just be completely wrong. Such is the nature of these kind of tournaments with the best third place teams advancing. It is what it is. Sometimes you'll get stuff right. Sometimes you won't, but let's go through the groups here. I'm going to tell you who's going to advance. So group a, we have Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde and Ethiopia. I think Cameroon is one of the favorites. I think they're going to take this AFCON by storm and top this group as hosts. They will finish first. I don't think they will get maximum points. I think they're actually going to draw Burkina Faso in that opener, go on to beat Cape Verde and Ethiopia and finish with seven points in this group. Second position, I have Burkina Faso. Despite missing uh, Top Soba, they're one of their main players, and Lassina Traore, I think they have too much depth for Ethiopia and Cape Verde Islands. I would not be surprised if Cape Verde pips them for second, but I'm going to give Burkina Faso the benefit of the doubt and say they come in second. Third, I'm going to go with Cape Verde Islands, and fourth, I'm going to go with Ethiopia. So Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde... Ethiopia. Group B. I have Senegal finishing top with nine points. I think they're going to sweep, possibly without even conceding a single goal. Second, although their result in recent friendlies has been disappointing in the build-up to this tournament, I still think on paper, Guinea still have the second best team. And I looked at their AFCON performances. They usually make it past the first round in tournaments they participate in. So I think Guinea's going to finish second in this group. 
But I think second will be a tight race between them, the Malawians, who people might underestimate, and Zimbabwe. In third, I'm going to go with Zimbabwe to come in third in this group. And in last, I'm going to say Malawi, but I'm not convinced Malawi is going to be the whipping boys and finish with zero points. I'm not convinced that's going to happen. I would not be surprised if the bottom three teams all beat each other, essentially. So I have Senegal, Guinea, Zimbabwe, and Malawi in last. Group C. I have Morocco finishing top with nine points. I think they're going to go very far in this tournament. I think they're they're possibly one of the favorites that are being overlooked right now. Yes, I know they're missing Hakeem, uh, they're missing Zayek, but I think other playmakers will step up. I look for guys like Ashraf Hakimi to possibly be a contender for one of the best players in this tournament. I have Morocco finishing top. Second, because of pedigree and experience, this is not the best Ghanaian generation, but I have Ghana finishing second. And I think Ghana will be slightly favored to beat the second place team from Group A and maybe do a little bit better than the round of 16 exit in 2019. I am keeping an eye on Ghana here to possibly be that team who follows the trend who follows the trend of being an unexpected winner that's not a that's not a prediction but if you're looking for unexpected winner a team that finally breaks through and wins the afcon after a long period of time keep an eye on Ghana just because of their pedigree and their experience in this competition but I have them finishing in second third I'm going with Comoros. I agree with Dominic Rich FC. I have Comoros, the debutants, finishing third in this group. I think that the players, there seems to be a revolt going on right now in Gabon. And, you know, Pierre Emmerich Aubameyang, he's set to miss that first game for Comoros, which is a mandatory three points for Gabon. It's good that he'll be in, if there's any game he has to miss in the group stages, it's that match because you would, you'd rather have him back in the fold against Ghana and Morocco. But Gabon are soft bodies. I'm sorry, they're soft. They don't do anything in Afcon. They don't do. They don't do anything in Afcon. I want. I would. I would like to see them prove me wrong. But I could see a situation where Comoros gets a draw in that match against uh, Gabon. Gabon may be getting another draw against Ghana when their backs are against the wall, and then exiting against Morocco with a loss. I don't know if Comoros is going to have enough to advance. Because this group is actually quite tough, I think this is one of the groups of death. There could be only two teams that advance from this group. But I'm going go with Morocco in first, Ghana second, Comoros in third, Gabon in fourth. Gabon has to prove me wrong. They have to prove me wrong. Now, that's actually a risky prediction because on paper... Gabon could finish second. They could capitalize on Ghana's weakness, finish second, and for all we know, go on a run to the quarterfinals. But I'm not putting money on it. Okay. Group D. The winner of Group D has a pathway to the semifinals because the winner of group D plays a third place team in the next round and avoids another group winner until the semis. It is very crucial for Egypt and Nigeria to finish top of this group because the loot, the, the, the team that misses out will likely have to come up against Algeria in the next round, or, or even if it's not Algeria still have a tough, game against the Ivory Coast. Whereas on the other foot, if you finish first, you could play against Gambia or Mauritania or Guinea-Bissau or Equatorial Guinea, whatever. Now, <clears throat> this is a, a West African AFCON 
despite the fact you know Egypt is the exception to the rule in uh, among North African teams based on history, we tend to do very well in general in Afcons. Um, I'm a little worried from Nigeria's standpoint because they've had some notable exclusions from their squad. In fact, when I pull this up here, give me one moment. Give me one moment. Yeah, so Emmanuel Dennis, Victor Osimen, Leon Balagun, and Shehu Abdullahi are all re replaced from the squad with uh, the likes of Peter Olayinka, Tyrone Abui, Henry Onyekuru. This suggests that they're not going to have all their firepower up front. I'm, now, look, I have no hesitancy to say this as an Egyptian. Nigeria, when they're maxed out, they're better than us. And nearly almost every area of the pitch, Nigeria is a better team. Man per man. Them missing some key forwards and uh, those go-to outlets of creativity, it plays into our favor. It plays into our favor. And if this group comes down to goal difference... If we were to rack up the score against a Sudanese team that we're very familiar with and then beat Guinea-Bissau and we get a draw against Nigeria and on seven points each, it could come down to uh, goal differential. And because of the way that Carlos Kirosh has been developing this squad to have that support system in place for Mohamed Salah where he's no longer the key playmaker and there's other goal scorers that have played an integral role in this squad, a vast improvement from previous managers Hector Cooper and uh, Hossam El Badri, I actually kind of slightly favor us to finish first in this group. I slightly favor us to finish first in this group. The key is to get something from that match against Nigeria. I think we have to get at least a draw. And if we were to get a draw, we have to outscore them in the other two games or hope that or hope that one of Guinea-Bissau or Sudan can do us a favor against Nigeria. Here's another thing about Nigeria, too. Nigeria can win this tournament. Nigeria can finish anywhere between the round of 16 and winning this competition because of the way the bracket is set up, also because of the talent on their team. The talent on their team, excuse me. But one thing that concerns me about Nigeria is they... left it late in their World Cup qualifying group against Cape Verde Islands and the Central African Republic. Remember, they lost at home to Minnow's Central African Republic. They got only a draw at home against Cape Verde on the final match day that saw them squeak through into, not squeak through, but advance to the final round. Now, I don't know Augustin Aguven. This will be his first match in charge of Nigeria. His very first match in charge will be that opener against Egypt. Maybe this will give a sort of revitalization for Nigeria that uh, they needed because Gernot Rohr had really outstayed his welcome there for too long. The team was stagnating, um, which is why it's so hard to predict how, where Nigeria is going to finish because here's a crazy crazy uh, statistic. Nigeria has reached the semifinals, uh, I believe, in 13 of the last 16 AFCONs. They've made at least, at least, no, no, not the last, in, in 16 appearances, they've made, they've reached the semifinals 13 times. That's pretty, that's pretty, wow. They reached third place in the last edition in 2019. But I have to wonder if the omission of Osimen and Dennis and these couple of other guys, there and Igalo. I know that some Nigerians don't rate Odi on Igalo, but he was their top scorer in the last competition in 2019. I have to wonder if it will play into our favor. I, I, I just like, and this is me trying to be as impartial as possible. The way that Carlos Kiosh has our team set up and the support Salah has Salah, you know, he's tearing it up for Liverpool this season. Um, could that translate over into the into the national team? I don't know. Not a very good performance in AFCON 2019. 
could that be different this year? And Carlos Quiroz, when asked if the if the goal was to qualify for the World Cup, he said, yes, but we're playing to win this tournament as well. I also read somewhere that Egypt, there's COVID going around. There's COVID going around. But it's impacting every team. And I haven't heard any news yet of specific players being impacted from it. So for now, going off the information I have, I think this group is going to come down to goal differential. Um, I think we're going to finish top. I think we're going to finish top. It's a risky call, but I think we're going to finish first. And I have Nigeria coming in second. I have Guinea-Bissau coming third. I think people are really underestimating Guinea-Bissau. I think that they have some really decent players from the Portuguese second division. They beat Sudan comfortably in World Cup qualifying. They're in the same group in World Cup qualifiers. I think they're going to beat them here. This will be where the West African advantage really comes into play. Uh, and I think Sudan is going to be bottom of this group. I don't agree with folks that have Sudan in third and Guinea-Bissau in last. And I'll even go one step further and say, I think Guinea-Bissau have a decent shot at coming through into the next round for the first time ever. This is their third consecutive AFCON group stage exits in 2017 and in 2019. So I have Egypt in first, Nigeria second, largely because of squad uncertainty. I don't know much about Augustin Egoven as a manager. So Guinea-Bissau third, and I have Sudan in last. Those are my predictions. And I'm going to go, I said this yesterday in, in yesterday's video, I'm actually optimistic about Egypt this year. For the first time in a long time, I'm very optimistic about my Egypt, my Egypt team. Moving on to Group E. I think Algeria can, uh, I think Ivory Coast can cause Algeria a scare. And that could be another group where if they stalemate, that could come down to goal difference too if Algeria and Ivory Coast both beat Equatorial Guinea and Sierra Leone. But I'm going to go with Algeria to finish top. I think they're more clinical as a team. And I, I think Ivory Coast is having a lot of problems gelling together. But I think Ivory Coast have too much quality to not finish top two. And they're going to come in second. And in third place, I have Equatorial Guinea. But I would not be surprised if Sierra Leone come in third. Yeah, so I have, yeah. So I have, um, Algeria first, Ivory Coast second, Equatorial Guinea third, Sierra Leone last. Moving on to Group F. I have, uh, Mali finishing first because I don't trust Tunisia. I have Tunisia second. I have Mauritania coming in third. And Gambia in fourth. But I I could see Gambia coming in third, though. So, hmm. I might, I might change that. I'm not sure. I might change that. I'm going to, you know, I have a feeling Gambia might finish third here, guys. But I'm going to... I'm going to stick with... Mauritania to finish third. But I don't feel comfortable one, or the, one way or the other. Gambia in fourth. So, who are my third place teams? Let me pull up my thing here. Let me fill up the bracket here and see who I think will finish in third. Uh, who will be the, the 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 four best third placed teams? So, uh, Cape Verde is in third. I have Zimbabwe in third. I have Comoros in third in their group. Let me just fill this out here. I'm using fotmob.com for that. Uh, yeah, on a second, Comoros third. I do have Egypt first and Nigeria second. Guinea-Bissau third, Sudan fourth. 
Algeria, Ivory Coast, Equatorial Guinea, Sierra Leone, Mali, Tunisia, Mauritania, and Gambia. So my, my six third place teams are Cape Verde, Zimbabwe, Comoros, Guinea-Bissau, Equatorial Guinea, and Mauritania. Here comes the headache where you have to predict who's going to come through in, in the best third place teams. So uh, I'm going to say I don't think Comoros is going to have enough to advance. I'm picking Zimbabwe to advance for the first time in their history. I think they'll come through. I'm also going to pick Guinea-Bissau to come through. I'm going to pick Mauritania to come through. And between Equatorial Guinea and Cape Verde... That's hard. That's really hard because this could be a case where Cape Verde's group is just so difficult with Cameroon and, and Burkina Faso in it, and even Ethiopia, who are no pushovers, that it could allow Equatorial Guinea to, to squeeze. But then again, Equatorial Guinea have two powerhouses in their group with Algeria and Ivory Coast, so they have no margin for error. They have to beat Sierra Leone, most likely, to be honest. So... Woo, that's tough. That is tough. And Cape Verde Islands look really good in World Cup qualifying. They uh they pushed Nigeria to the limit all the way until the final match day. So I'm gonna go with I think Cape Verde is a better team. I, I do think Cape Verde is better than Equatorial Guinea. But this could come down to the groups. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say Equatorial Guinea will finish on goal differential ahead of Cape Verde Islands, possibly. That's just, it, it sucks, but that's the luck of the draw. So my my four best third place teams are, are in no order. Zimbabwe, Guinea-Bissau, Mauritania, and Equatorial Guinea. So based on that, my bracket, let me just punch this in here. I filled all this out prior. So my round of 16. So I think my predictions here are going to surprise some people. I might get a lot of hate for this too. So Round of 16, Burkina Faso versus Ghana. Tough one. I think Burkina Faso match up well with Ghana historically. But this is where they could miss, they could suffer from missing the likes of Tra Lesina Traore and Topsoba. I'm going to give it to the Black Stars to come through this and make it to the quarterfinals. That's what I have. Then we have Egypt versus Zimbabwe. I'm going to say we beat Zimbabwe. If we don't, we have a lot of problems on our hands. Senegal versus Guinea-Bissau. I'm going to pick Senegal to come through that. I don't think it's going to be an easy win for them. Um, I think Guinea-Bissau is a team that is on the up. And I think that in the next few years, we could see a lot of their Portuguese-based players shine for them. But I think Senegal will come through Guinea-Bissau. Then we have a rematch between Mali and Ivory Coast who met each other in the round of 16 back in 2019. Ivory Coast got the best of Mali. This time I'm picking Mali to beat the Ivory Coast. Mali to beat the Ivory Coast. So, so far I have Ghana, Egypt, Senegal, and Mali coming through. Guess what? Uh, I got an upset here for you. I got an upset here for you. Guinea is going to beat Tunisia. I think the second place team from Group B, whether it's Guinea or Zimbabwe, will make the quarterfinals. I don't trust Tunisia. I think they're going to have a stinker of a tournament. And Guinea is going to surprise them. Or if it's any team from Group B, whether it's Zimbabwe, but in Sammy Kiani's case, he went he went with Zimbabwe. I'm going with Guinea. I think Guinea's going to make the quarterfinals. 
I think Tunisia is going to go out this early. That's a prediction right there. Yes, it is. Then we have one second. Wait, hold on a second. Why did they fill this out incorrectly? Okay. Okay. One simple error. One simple error here. Uh, Egypt would actually play Mauritania. So it will beat Mauritania. That was the only mistake. So Egypt would play Mauritania, not Zimbabwe. I think we beat Mauritania. Ghana beats Burkina Faso. Senegal beats Guinea-Bissau. Mali beat Ivory Coast. Guinea upsets Tunisia. Here we go. Okay. Now we're updated. So Cameroon plays against Equatorial Guinea. Cameroon win that match, possibly in a blowout. Morocco versus Zimbabwe. Morocco will win that match. Morocco will go far in this competition. Here's the tough one. <laughs> Here's a very tough one. And this could be us. We could be in this position if we don't top our group ahead of Nigeria. Nigeria versus Algeria. <sighs> Ooh, boy. What do we think about this one? Nigeria versus Algeria. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. Come to think of it, Algeria eliminated Nigeria in the uh, semifinals last time around, right? In um, 2019? Nigeria sometimes can play to their best ability when their backs are against the wall. And this is a West African AFCON, after all. But am I really going to pick Algeria to go out in the round of 16? I'll say this right now. I'll say this. I don't think I don't think Algeria is going to repeat as champions. I don't have them repeating. But this is a hard match to call. This is a hard one to call. But see, the funny, the funny thing about this is. Remember I said in the group stages, Nigeria can win this tournament. It all comes down to the bracket because if Nigeria finishes above us in Group D, they could go on to win the whole thing because they don't play another group winner until the semifinals. And I, I might actually favor Nigeria to beat Senegal if they played each other in a semifinal. So this could really be a case where the Nigeria versus Egypt game is the most consequential match of the entire Africa Cup of Nations, except, of course, the final that determines the winner. It's hard. It's really hard. I get a feeling Alger uh, Nigeria can 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 shit house that can come through it, but it's it's. Am I really going to pick Algeria to go out in the round of sixteen? Football is funny sometimes. I hope no Nigerian that watches this um, takes any offense if I were to pick Algeria in in this circumstance. But this is a hard one. I'm not sure who I'm going to go with here in this situation. Um, I, look, it's the bracket. Nigeria is one of the best teams in Africa. But look, it's the bracket, man. It's it's nothing personal. It's it's the bracket. I I, I got to go with Algeria here. I don't know if Algeria is going to go out in the round of 16. I, I'm not bold enough to make that call. I think I. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to say Nigeria comes through. 
I'm going to say Nigeria comes through that. Yeah, I'm going to say Nigeria comes through. I think the, the defending champions are going to dominate the group stages and have a shock upset in the next round. Why not? It's AFCON. I'm going to say Nigeria comes through that. That's a big call right there. That's a very big call. But I'm going to say I'm going to say Nigeria will come through that match. <sighs> wow. That brings us to the quarterfinals. Now, let me say this. It's not like I'm making all of these predictions in real time. Um, I did fill out my bracket before this earlier this evening. The reason I spent so much time on the Algeria-Nigeria game just now was because I didn't make that decision until just now. But I already had my bracket filled out. So I'm just going to go through and tell you what I think is going to happen. Right, So the quarterfinals, Ghana versus Egypt. Egypt has to be careful here. We usually get the best of Ghana, um, but Ghana now here has an opportunity to get some revenge from previous AFCONs in the past. You get what I'm saying. But there's a reason why I said the winner of Group D has a path to the semifinals, whether it's Egypt or Nigeria. It's because we play a second-place team in the quarters. And because of the humiliation of on home soil two years ago when we went out in the uh, round of 16, I think we should get past Ghana. We should get past Ghana. I'm gonna, I, So I have Egypt getting past Ghana. Like I said, I'm very optimistic about Egypt this year, which is something I have not said in a very long time. Then we have Senegal versus Mali. West African clash. I think Senegal will come through that. I think that's a potential for an upset, slight upset, but I think Senegal is really determined this year they should get through that. Then we have Guinea versus Cameroon. Guinea versus Cameroon. It's the end of the road here for Guinea. I don't think there's going to be a Cinderella semifinal run. Cameroon will, will come through that. Then we have Nigeria versus Morocco. I actually am going to pick Morocco to come through that. I don't think Nigeria is going to get through both Algeria and Morocco. I think that Nigeria typically plays best when their backs are against the wall. But I think Morocco enters this tournament with a massive chip on their shoulder to prove uh, from the failure of last AFCON. And I think if there's one North African team whose name is not Egypt that can book that trend... Uh, and go on a deep run in this tournament, it's Morocco. So I have Nigeria exiting in the quarterfinals. I'm sorry if that bothers anybody, but you take the defending champions along with you. But I have I have Morocco coming through that and get, get, getting to the semifinals. So my semifinals are Egypt versus Senegal and Cameroon versus Morocco. There you have it, Sammy County. That's my final four. We're, we're going to get Mohamed Salah versus Sadio Mane in one clash, and we're getting the host nation versus Morocco in the other clash. Take that for what you will. And I could see any combination here being the final, whether it's Senegal versus Cameroon, a rematch of 2002, or if it's Egypt versus Cameroon, or if it's Senegal versus Morocco, which I think is... Intuition is telling me Senegal-Morocco might be the likely final, or maybe Senegal versus Cameroon. It could be all West Africa. It could be West Africa versus uh, North Africa, like we had in 2019. Unlikelier, it could be all North Africa if it's Egypt-Morocco. So let me say right now, I can see any combination of this of here happening. Any combination. Now, I want to ask a question. Does anybody here have doubts about Senegal's mentality for this tournament? Does anyone here have any uh, qualms about how far Senegal can reach? I want to ask the audience right now how you guys feel. Sammy says, no doubts. I think you might be the only one in this comment section that uh, is actually commenting on the live chat. Sammy Keani says they will deliver. 
every gut instinct is telling me this is going to be a Senegal versus Cameroon or Morocco final. If I'm being very honest, a gut, if I'm speaking with mind, but I could see any combination happen. And I just, it's hard. I don't know. It's, it's very difficult to call. It's very difficult to call. Especially between Cameroon and Morocco as well. So you know what I'm saying? Cameroon, who are really flying under the radar. And I think could win, make it two out of three AFCONs in um, two out of three AFCON victories. This one would be their first time on home soil. Their sixth title overall, their sixth trophy overall, but first one on home soil. And if they get to that final, I don't know if they can be stopped if they were to get to that final, regardless if they come up against Senegal or if they come against Egypt. You know what I'm saying? So it is difficult. It is very difficult. Guys, I'm angry, though. I'm angry. I'm very angry because it feels like Egypt should go on a deep run in this tournament. If they make it to the semifinals, that's a deep run. It's a good run. And I am a lot too optimistic, but I think Senegal has a lot of quality on their squad. One thing I question about Senegal is, will they finally break through? Will they finally break through and win their first ever Africa Cup of Nations? I think they might just do it. But I have a question, not of their quality. I have a question of their mentality coming up against a team with Egypt that's been here and done that. But then again, we've had our AFCON pedigree snapped with that early exit in 2019. So I think on paper, Senegal's favorites, uh, of course. Uh, and then I think between Cameroon and Morocco, with Cameroon playing at home, it's shaping up to be a West African final. And the most common matchup that folks seem to have is a Senegal versus Algeria re rematch from 2019. I think it could just as easily possibly be a, a 2017 rematch between Cameroon and Egypt. So there's all different combinations here. It's all different combinations here. I'm going to get hate for this. I'm going to get hate for this. I have to back my team. And I think our experience will shine through. My final is Egypt versus Cameroon, baby. I've got Egypt versus Cameroon. That's what I'm going to say. And for the first time in my life, for the first time in my life, for the first time in my life, I'm backing us to win a tournament. We're winning it. I trust Carlos Kiros. I believe in this project. I believe this team is a better version of itself. And I think we're going to win our eighth title. I usually am very pessimistic on my one of my teams, other team being the U.S., of course. But this year, I think we're going to win the AFCON. And I hope to God we qualify for the World Cup again. The two most successful nations in the history of the AFCON are going to meet each other in the final. And we're going to beat the host nation. Every fiber of my being is telling me Senegal versus Morocco. Morocco. 